is just for you today's word is for every single man and woman and child who've had dreams that have broken the sermon today i'm going to speak about the title of is my sermon is the era of big dreams it's your time for big dreams before i go into the sermon my sermon, i want to read to you the lyrics of a song by gene Bost bostick god of big dreams you are the God of big dreams. You said that I'd do great things. You know my heart and you hear me when I sing. You are the God of big dreams. You carry my burdens. You carry my weight. Never give me more than I can take. See that mountain standing in my way. I say, mountain, move, spirit. Rise, dry bones. Move, mountain, move. You are the God of big dreams. You said that I'd do great things. You know my heart and hear me when I sing. You are the God of big dreams. Wearing your armor covered in grace. Pouring out love. Casting out hate. Even if the whole world's laughing in my face. I say, move mountain. Move spirit. Rise dry bones. Move mountain, move. You are the God of big dreams. You said that I'd do great things. You know my heart and hear me when I sing. You are the God of big dreams. Speaking to the waves, speaking to the mountains, speaking to the fear, speaking to the sickness, trying to be like Jesus. Just want to be like Jesus. You are the God of big dreams. You said that I'd do great things. You know my heart and hear me when I sing. You are the God of big dreams. Can we pray? Father... I pray right now for every single person watching, every single person who had dreams or who has got dreams, wherever they are, that they would hear your word bring life again to those dreams. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is the era, the era we are in right now. This time of the COVID is the time for big dreams. I want to say to you, it's a time for the resurrection of dreams that you thought were dead and got forgotten. That which you were created for as a child. What, when you were born, you had dreams. You knew your destiny was to be something. You were, didn't want to just live a, a mediocre life and just survive. I want to tell you, go back. Go back and hear again what God put in your heart. You see, God is the dream giver. He puts dreams within your heart. And Satan comes to kill, to steal those dreams away from you. But there's a God in heaven. He's not asleep. He's awake. Hallelujah. Acts 2 verse 17. The New King James Version says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Everybody, all flesh, that means you. Old and young, man or woman, that means you. That God promised in the last days. If I look at the world we're living in today, we need dreams we need people that speak dreams and visions because that is what makes the difference. Everybody speaking negative and death and moaning about the economies and, and about uh, the corona and about this one did this and that one did that. Let us talk different. Let us talk in visions and in dreams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. What is a genuine dream of yours? What dream do you have of your life's purpose on earth? What is your life's purpose? I want to ask you again, what is your life's purpose? What is a dream that you thought you would so love to do? 
I want to tell you, it's not too late to begin to dream again. Let me to read you a section um, in the Bible from Genesis about Joseph who had dreams. Joseph 37 and from verse 5 to 11 in the New King James Version. Now Joseph had a dream. One of the most powerful statements just there. Now Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf rose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. I want to tell you, when you speak the dreams that God has given you, Satan hates it. Because the Bible says, my people perish without a vision. Satan hates visions and dreams. And he hates you when you speak the God-given dreams that God has given you. Verse 9, then uh, Joseph, he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers. And he said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in mind. I want to say to you, you need to take notes. I'm going to go through a lot of points and you need to make notes of this, or you need to listen to this and make notes of it again afterwards, okay? It's so important that you write down key points, because I promise you, an hour from now, you won't remember everything. But if you write down notes, you remember. So I'll give you a moment to just uh, get your pen and paper ready, and I'll just have a sip of water. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody faces challenges in reaching their dreams. A dream's not one day you have this dream and the next day it comes to pass. You know that, don't you? Hey, who, who can identify with that? You've had dreams and oh my goodness, it's been a difficult thing. It's sometimes difficult. There are challenges. Let's be real. There are challenges in reaching your dream. I can imagine Joseph having these dreams. That he's going to be this great big man of God. Ha! He didn't expect he was going to go on that journey that he was going to go on. That it would take him into the slave pits. That he would face death. He would be alone. He would be abandoned. He would be rejected in the journey to reach his dream. Some of you are in that place right now. You feel like that which was promised to you has fallen apart. That which you believed about yourself makes no more sense. That which you thought God had given you as a child. That which you birthed in your heart. You feel like Joseph in the pit. Or as a slave. Or in prison. I want to tell you. One of the biggest things in stopping you reaching your dreams is discouragement. You can write that down. Write down that word discouragement. People will discourage you from dreaming. You have to decide now who you will let talk into your life. You cannot let people discourage your dream. Okay? You make the call. Just like Joseph, his brothers came and discouraged him and said, who do you think you are? I want to tell you, people will challenge you. They will tell you you don't have the ability, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the know-how to do a dream. Richard Branson said that even if you don't know something, you say yes to an opportunity and you learn as hard as you can. In 1997... Oh, that's a long time ago, 96, 97. I 
just given, 97, I'd given birth to my daughter, Amber, and I came out of hospital, and somebody phoned me and said, do I do typesetting? And computers were just beginning then. And I said, yes, I do typesetting. And they said, good, they'll come see me tomorrow. Put down the phone, and I said to my husband, what's typesetting? Okay? And we did some quick research. We didn't have Google in it like we had there. You know, now it's just quick typing. And we found out what typesetting was. So they came to see me, and I spent the next 48 hours learning how to do typesetting to send out pamphlets. And I started my first little company. Um, yeah. Um, I can't even com Computers Unlimited or something like that. And so I did my journey, and then I taught computers. I trained myself, and I would teach people how to work in Windows. And if they ask questions, I didn't know. I told them, we'll do today's lesson. Tomorrow we'll tackle that lesson. And then I would go study it up. You see, God gave me an opportunity. And I said, yes. And I worked hard. Don't be discouraged when people say you can't. Don't be discouraged. With God, anything is possible. Everything you say that God says to you to do, do. You make the way. The second thing you need, you need a godly energy. Because we can't accomplish the dream if we don't have the energy and the tenacity to push through. You've got to ask God to give you an increase in tenacity and energy to keep doing the dream, to keep pursuing the dream. The way you get that is spending time one-on-one -on -one with God. You have to read the Word. You have to spend time with God. When you spend time alone with God, He releases divine energy into you and gives you the ability to keep going and to do the things that He's called you to do. That energy will cause your dream to come to pass. That energy, when you spend time alone with God, that will stop discouragement in its tracks. You've got a dream. You've got a dream. The third thing, avoid negative people who spend their day moaning and groaning. There's nothing that increases discouragement like spending time with somebody that's got nothing good to say. That's a fact. And if you're the one that is always moaning and groaning, it's time to repent and say, from today onwards, I will only speak life. Surround yourself with positive people. S surround yourself who, who, with people who are dreamers and who speak vision and who have purpose. The quickest way to reach your dream is to have others who are dreamers to rub off on you. Increase your dream. Frontliners, I want to tell you now, it's time to increase your dream. Do you hear me? Ha, you've got to become a dangerous dreamer. If you want to achieve great things for God, it starts now. Become a dangerous dreamer. If your dream does not scare you, it's not from God. I want to tell you, whew, we've had some pretty big dreams. We had dreams of what we're going to do, and it seemed like everything went against it. But we had a word from God. When you get a word from God, you have tenacity to keep going. And we had to keep going back to God. God, did you say, is this what you promised? And God, again, kept his word. He doesn't change. The Bible says God does not change like shifting shadows. Has he not said it? And would he not do it? That's in James chapter 1, by the way. The th and then number 5. The thing you need, you feed, will be the things that grow. The thing you feed will be the thing that grows. What are you feeding? Are you feeding fear? Or are you feeding faith? Or do you have an attitude to say, I can do this? I want to tell you, if you're feeding faith, you can do anything. Jesus said you can move mountains by faith. You can do anything. Number six, 
Don't be intimidated by people. Don't fear people. Be intimidated and feared by God. Rather listen to what God says. If you look in the Bible, there's so many stories of people who had great dreams and did the impossible. God would take ordinary men and women and change destinies of nations. Who's to say that's not you? Who's to say that's not you? So what obstacles or hindrances are you facing in reaching your dreams? Think about your dreams for a minute. What is stopping you? One of the biggest things, and you can write here, number one, offenses and unforgiveness is a major hindrance to achieving your God-given dreams and purpose. God cannot walk with you if your heart is bitter and twisted. You've got to get over it. You see, God wants to entrust you with more. But it's bitterness and unforgiveness is, is like a poison. So how can God put dreams and vision in you where it's going into a place of poison where it will corrupt the dreams and vision? Does this make sense? Luke 17, verse 1, Jesus speaking. Then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. Mm. Yeah. Jesus said it's going to happen. Offenses will come. But if you hold on to that dif- offense, if you hold on to that forgiveness, it will strangle the life out of your dreams. Oh, you say, but... Well, I've forgiven, you know. I've got it all put together. Yes. I'm good. I can do this. How do you know if you've got unforgiveness? Or if you've still got an offense? Number one, if you keep talking to people about the situation or about the person that did you wrong. Ouch. Number two, if you consistently blame others for your unhappiness, then you have an offense in your heart. And I just want to say, I'm not preaching at anybody specific, okay? This is the word. This is God. People blame each other. Their parents, their pastors, their family, their kids, their spouse, the church, the color of their skin, whatever, even God for their unhappiness. The word of God says, you have to forgive 77 times 7. How many times have you forgiven today? Well, you don't understand what they did to me way back in 1935. (laughs) My husband kicked my dog. Come on, get over yourself. Do you want to achieve your dream? Get over yourself. Ask God to forgive you for holding on to unforgiveness and grudges. Ask him to wash that putrid negativity out of your life so that you can hold on to the new dream, the dream he imparts to you. And he will give you the ability and the energy and the purpose to accomplish your dream. You have to turn your disappointments in life into fuel for your race. Amen. That, that saying is from our apostle Nikki. You have to turn your disappointments into fuel for the race. Amen. You have to. Nobody else can do it with you. Joseph did. Every time things went wrong, he got up and he said, I'm going to do this. And he chose to make the best of every situation he was in, irrespective of who had done him wrong. Turn your disappointments into fuel for the race. Take responsibility and focus. No one else is responsible for making your dreams come to pass. Only you. I cannot blame anybody. It's up to me. I have choices to make. 
And I've made choices this last while that is hard, it's challenging, and some days I've cried with the frustration in those choices. But I have a dream. I have a goal. I'm going to push through. Are you? Amen. You have to own your past. You have to forgive consistently. Number eight, stop making excuses and then pursue your dreams by hard work, study, and more hard work. Find out as much as what you can about what you want to do. Nothing is stopping you. You know, uh, my dear friend, Pastor Wendy, in her 40s, she decided to do a degree. And I respect her, and she's got her degree. It took time, but she got it. My mother-in-law, in her 40s, she's now 80-odd, <laughs> she started studying uh, and furthering herself with social work. And eventually she became director for Child Welfare South Africa. What is stopping you? And she was a single mom. Her husband had died. She had four children. What is stopping you? Nothing. Nothing is stopping you except yourself. Amen. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3 from the Amplified Classic Edition. For a dream comes with, with much business and painful effort and a fool's voice with many words. I need to read that again, don't I? For a dream comes with much business and painful effort and a fool's voice with many words. I hear people saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Ooh, and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And they want everybody else to make it happen for them. But your dream comes when you take your business of your dream seriously. And it takes effort and it takes commitment and it takes pushing through again and again and again regardless of what obstacles you face. You never, ever, ever, ever give up. Another thing I want to talk about is don't settle for an average life. Most of us settle for an average life just to exist, just to pay the bills. Oh, if only I can get my kids through school. Oh, if only I can make the rent at the end of the month. No more. If you call the name of Jesus, it's time for the big dreams. You've got to dream bigger. You've got to see yourself doing great things. You've got to see yourself making a difference. You've got to dare to dream big. Us as a family began to dream. We began to dream about giving away cars when we didn't even own our own car. We began to dream about giving houses away when we didn't even have our own house. We lost everything three times over. Three times the sheriff of the court came. But we had the dream. We've given lots of cars away. And I know soon we're going to give houses away, fully paid houses away. How? I don't know how, but this I know, we're working hard. We're sowing, we're giving, we're doing whatever it takes. Because I know him who promised. He who promised is faithful. The Bible says that we are being changed from glory to glory. Are you? Are you being changed from glory to glory? Are you being changed in your life from level to level? 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. New King James. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Other versions say from level to level. Are you at the same level today as what you were six months ago? What have you done to pursue God for new levels? What have you done to pursue God for new dreams? What are you doing to accomplish your dreams? I can't do it. 
This is just who I am. That means you're insulting the spirit of grace. You're insulting God because he says that with God, all things are possible. Only believe. He has some keys to pursue your dreams. These are important. You need to take note of this. Stay connected to your covering, your spiritual covering. God is not confused. He puts you under a spiritual covering for a purpose. They are often the key and the catalyst to you reaching your dreams. I want to say to you as well, don't trade in your spiritual parents for anything in the world. Stick to them. Amen. Never give up. Even when you are cross or offended, stay faithful. The Bible says God does not change like shifting shadows. God's not confused. We have people come to us and say, Oh, God says, you're my spiritual parents. I'm here to serve you. And then next week they disappear and you... And now what? Oh, no, no, no. Joe Soap down the road, road is now my spiritual parent. Or, no, we're going to do it our own way. Hello? Either God's confused or you are not hearing God's word. Okay? God has principles he's put in place. And one of them is spiritual parents. Stick with your spiritual parents. Get over yourself if you're cross or offended. Thank God for their protection. Thank God for correction. A wise man receives correction. And you know, for you to accomplish your dreams, you've got to be a wise man. Amen? Don't burn your bridges. Always be courteous and thankful. Thank people with a humble heart for when they help you or when they do things for you no matter what. Honor and be thankful to those who have helped you so far on your journey as unto God. Life has a funny way of you needing those very people again for your next stepping stone or into your next level. You treat people with honor. You sow thankfulness. You be thankful no matter what it is. If somebody gives us 10 rand, Dad and I are so humbled and so overwhelmed that people will do things for us. We were invited for supper the other night. Most of you know Daniel. I know he's tight financially. But you know how much it meant to us. And we couldn't thank him enough how much we appreciated that. Guys, be thankful. One day, Daniel's going to be this powerful businessman or whatever God's got for him. And we might need his help or his input or his wisdom. You honor people. Embrace relationships with those God has placed as a higher spiritual authority in your life. Embrace them, pursue it. Sow finances into their lives, irrespective of what they have or what they do, and stick with it. People look at us and say, oh, you're so wealthy. But you know what? We, we practiced when we had nothing. We would sow into our apostle's life on a personal basis. We sow up. And we have seen every single time we have sown, when we've faced extreme challenges and we decide to sow, that God in the next week or so, miracles happen. Sometimes within an hour, there's a supernatural release. Why? Because a stronger spiritual authority than us is standing with us and praying with us in agreement for us to prosper in our dreams. Another thing, keys to pursuing your dreams. Faithfulness and consistency are big keys. Keep on, keep on. Keep tithing, keep sowing. Every time God stirs your spirit with a yes, this is for me, I want this, then sow into that. I know people think, oh, money, money. No, it's not money, money. 
But it's an active way of saying, I'm putting value to the word of God that has been awakened in my life so that I can know that I can act on it. Sowing like this is an activator of your dreams and your dreams will come apart. We live it. We do it. And then the last thing, write the dream. Habakkuk 2.2 2, the New King James Version says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. We know that. But listen to this vision. Version. Habakkuk 2 to the Amplified Classic Edition. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and it engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may will be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. Write down a simple vision. You can put all the details in, but narrow it down so that somebody that walks past can just read it as they go past. And it makes sense. So that when you wake up in the morning, it's stuck on your mirror and you can read it and speak it. When you go to your bathroom and you close your toilet door, the vision is stuck up there. You can read it and sleep, uh, uh, speak it. When you make yourself your slice of bread for breakfast, stick it on your bread bin. You can read it and speak it. In 1993... I was working for internal auditing, I think it was 93, for the government, and all government posts were, f were frozen, and my husband got a transfer to Nisner, and I was in Port Elizabeth. And I prayed, and God said, will you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I would. So he gave me a scripture, and I wrote it up, and I stuck it on my office. And everybody who came in first laughed, and they said, this is impossible. You will never get a post. All government posts are frozen. Well, the week before we moved, I was phoned by a completely different department of the government. We had no experience. And they said, the person doing that job has something that happened to them, and they need somebody to step in and do their job. I said, yes, I'll do it. I started the next week. Don't tell me that the word of God is not powerful. God can do impossible and make it possible for you if you dare to believe. Write the dream and set date goals where you can see it. Start by step one and a date. And what are you going to do to achieve it? Number two. Repeat step one. <laughs> Write goals. Set dates. What are you going to do to achieve it? Number three. Repeat that step. Number four. Keep going. What do I mean? Never, ever, ever give up. You're responsible to achieve your dreams. God on your side, anything is possible. Set measurable goals that pushes you to step out and dream big and have a complete dependence on every promise of God. Study hard. Work hard. Pray hard. Okay? You've got a dream. You can do it. With God, all things are possible. Let's see what Jeremiah 29 says. Verse 11, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare, for good, and peace, and not for evil. To give you a hope and a future in your final outcome. He's there to give you a future and a hope. Some of you have lost hope. Some of you have had such a lot of things come against you in your life. Some of you had so much heartache and disappointments and brokenness and unfairness come across you in your life. 
I want to talk to, to you. I want to tell that little girl inside of you, that little boy inside of you, I want to tell you that God has got a plan for you and that God's got dreams that you've still got to come accomplish. Miles Monroe said that the graveyard is full of dreams that have not ever been born. There's cures for cancer in graveyards. There's cures for AIDS. There's the next Michelangelo. There's the next Whitney Houston. But people are too scared to try because they've been discouraged and disappointment, disappointed. Yes, people will hurt you. Yes, people will betray you. Yes, people will let you down. But there's a God in heaven that says, I want to do good for you with all of my heart and with all of my soul. So if you get a hold of God and you allow his love to permeate your life, you can achieve your greatest dreams ever. It's not over. It's never too late. Never, ever, ever. It's your time. This is the era for big dreams. This season that we are in now, July 2020, is the beginning of the greatest dream of your life coming to pass. You can do this. Say to the person next to you, yes, I can do this. You will have days that you feel you can't. You will have days that you want to give up. Go back to the word of God and say, God, you said. God, you said. And I promise you, you will find courage to run the race. And one day you will look back and you'll be like Joseph. Oh, look, I'm governor of all of Egypt and all the world. He achieved his dream regardless of obstacles because he never, ever gave up on the dream giver, Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you now. I want to pray for you. Maybe you've said that I don't know Jesus as the dream giver. I've never really given my life to this Jesus. I don't know him the way you do, Pastor Mandy. Today you can know him. Today you can know him. All he desires is your surrender of your brokenness, of your broken dreams, of the hurt in your life, of the disappointments. Give it to him. So I want to pray first of all for those who don't know Jesus and have never encountered him. And you will see on the screen that there's gonna, numbers are going to appear where you can contact us. We want to send you just some information free of charge where it will just help you in your walk getting to know Jesus, the giver of dreams. If this is you, won't you pray this simple prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my broken dreams. I surrender my life. I believe that you died and you rose again. I ask you, Jesus, to come and reveal yourself to me. I give you my life and I receive eternal salvation right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want to pray for those who've given up on their dreams, who thinks it's too late, who thinks because Satan has dealt them some really bad cards, life has knocked them down again and again and again. I want to tell you, and I speak from experience, that God is the resurrector of dreams. God can do the impossible. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Let me pray for you. Before I do, I just want to say that if this is you, if this is you, if you need a miracle in your dreams, won't you just type amen, amen that I can know? 
Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to go afterwards and specifically pray for everybody that, that says, Amen, pray. Tap, Amen, pray. I'm going to specifically go and intercede on your behalf because I believe so much in Jesus, the giver of dreams. Let me pray. Father, right now for everybody that is typing, amen, pray. Say everybody that says, yes, that's me. I pray for them now, almighty God. I call on heaven and earth as a witness that God, your word is true. You are the dream giver. And if you could do it for Joseph, if you could do it for me, if you could do it for so many others, you can do it for this person. I release your power and your glory that they will grow in glory to glory, that they will know you and their hope is established in what you say, not what man says. I pray for courage. I pray for tenacity. I pray for hope. And I pray most of all, God, that they will allow you to cause them to dream again because you are trustworthy. Jesus, you won't betray them. You won't disappoint them. You love them and you hold them. I speak the peace of Jesus over you right now. I speak hope and I bless you with dreams and purpose. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. Come on, you over there, I dare you, dare to dream again. Be quick to forgive. Don't hold on to anything else that will stop you in your dreams. Pursue Jesus Christ and He will do it. You have just walked into the era of big dreams. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye, folks. You. <laughs>